Ooh, hey. Hey, VC. What's up? Uh, sorry to pull a vinyl rich there. <laughs> uh, what's up? Seeking a thread back and doing a couple of quick contest videos to sort of, uh, another good reason to show some of the variety I have, um, and records I'm excited about and sort of all timers. So this video is for uh, Ron Haggerty's vinyl Sanctuary, his five punk records. I'm gonna go post-punk. I have a lot of definitely classic punk too, but post-punk is sort of the thing that I, it's sort of a never-ending well, I think, of, of uh, you can divvy and go into all these different areas within that, um, and there's always something new to discover within post-punk. Tr true with punk as well, but the formula of the actual music tends to be similar to, so to speak. With post-punk, you get a whole lot other little variety of stuff going on. So I'm just going to show five. I wanted to pick more, like ten, but I'll just go with these five. These are sort of like, these are up there as like my all-time favorite punk or post-punk records, or just ones that I'm sort of really excited about in general. So I'll just get into it. Uh, this first one, maybe more of a straight punk record, but I consider it sort of in the post-punk, um, sort of going into hardcore a little bit. This is the second album by The Wipers. You may know it, I'm sure you do, Youth of America. Got a great price on this at a record show here in Ithaca. It's the original uh, on Park Avenue. Great price on this. Like years, uh, four or five years ago at a record fair here and I had to grab it. Of course I had the jackpot reissues, which are worth grabbing if you don't have this record. But this is my favorite Wipers record, Youth of America. The title track is 10 out of 10. Just perfect, long, almost psychedelic, and it's sort of uh, guitars that Greg Sage was doing. Master. Okay, second, this was one maybe you don't know. Uh, y Pants. This is more in the no wave side of things, but this is Barbara S. and her group, her trio. This is produced by Wharton Tears, who you may know, sort of involved in the no wave scene, um, and released on Glenn Branca's label, Neutral Records. What this is um, kind of, you know, going more towards like the indie rock style. They have, uh, but it comes from a post punk or yeah, the no wave sort of, uh, you know, ethos. I'd say they're using a lot of odd instrumentation. You have Barbara S playing uh, ukulele. You have uh, this percussion on here that sounds almost like almost like a toy percussion. It's definitely like on the DIY style of things, and that's another big one for me, is the DIY and women doing punk in a way that was truly sort of organic and real. And this record is one of those. Um, I love it. It's not necessarily for everyone. A lot of people have tried to show this one too. Um, I don't know, maybe I just like it but didn't love it. There's a, there's a bunch of, I'm a big collector of, of basically women doing post-punk. I think it's sort of, the best. There it is on the neutral label. And there is a reissue of this one. I think it's, I don't remember where this ended up, whether it's pricey right now or not, but Y Pants, the album is Beat It Down. And I love it. I love it. All right. I'm trying to do these relatively quick. No edits on this. And I'm going to upload this one straight away. Here's a classic album. First, this Heat album, self titled. This is the Light in the Attic reissue that came out. Uh, six years ago, seven years ago. Thought about getting the original, but this this sounds so good. Um, I'm happy with this. And this, as, as I've said, talking about this record, it sounds here's the you know got the OB originally, or the um, Light in the Attic OB. It sounds like it could be made today or yeah, 40, 50 years ago. Um, nothing like this. Another DIY record. I guess they were using um, the two Charles's. Um, you know, thrift store sort of instrumentation. Um, this is like, there's dub in here, there's there's noise in here, there's yes, punk in here, uh, experimental. This is like got it all, and it it it's so always surprising how great this comes together. This heat, amazing artwork as well. Love it. This is definitely in the all-time top five punk records for me. The first Raincoats album. Uh, does not have Fairy Tale in the supermarket on it, which I ha you have to have the single for, unless you have the reissue. The reissues of this do have the single. That's that's an amazing song, an amazing song. But this record is foundational. This is one I think every collection needs to have. Um, songs are great. You have again women just sort of doing it in their own way, doing it in their own style. Um, 
the violin I'm playing on here is great. Now you had sort of a crossover with here in the Slits. Slits another favorite record of mine, of course. Um, but of course, they covered Lola. Uh, you would know uh, their version of it. I think it's sort of the first thing I heard. Uh, but this came out in Rough Trade. This is a UK Rough Trade copy. Um, and also, inter interestingly enough, I could have so shown the second album, um, which is to me just about equal to it. That one goes into a whole other territory, less sort of uh, punkish or melodic. It sort of plays with nuance and uh, strange spindly guitars and the vocals are weird. That, that's a straight up weird album, but um, this is sort of where to start. And if you're getting into post-punk or punk, you need this. Uh, here's one, I don't know, maybe some people will know, maybe you won't. This is the record by the Homosexuals and it's on recommended records. It's never been reissued. And um, Let's see, was there an insert? No. I found out about this. Um, I come from Long Island and grew up, well, yeah, and uh, living in Queens throughout uh, the majority of, or Queens and Brooklyn throughout the majority of my younger days. And so one of the big stores I would go to was Other Music in Manhattan. And if you've ever been to that store, it was small but their recommendation system and just what, what they would recommend was always on point and I saw this and I still have the CD I saw this at the recommending rack when I was going there it was like they were they were definitely stocking records but CDs were um, sort of like still pretty big they were still really the thing we're talking like 2002 three and uh, somebody recommended this album and it just caught my attention the cover is basically this I don't know why uh, the description sounded great and I played it over and over and finally got this UK original, maybe, I don't know, I'm not sure, six, seven years ago. I've had this for a while. It's got um, another one that's sort of tough to pin down. There's like a, sort of a dubby vein happening. There's like a short wire or, um, uh, yeah, wire vibe happening on a lot of this. Um, but Bruno, one of the guys, and the, they've spun off into all these other pick, all these other sort of one-off projects. Uh, Black Noise, you can see that there. That's a label as well, which I think is their label. And you can there's all sorts of other records that are on that imprint that I really want, but they're not <laughs> not inexpensive. Um, so I'm always looking for those Black Noise imprint. There's only a few. Hearts in Exile, what a great song. It sounds like yeah, buzz like a Buzzcocks vibe, Wire. Um, I kind of think of the urinals, if you know the urinals. Um, yes, 100 Flowers, and uh, this is a great record. Soft South Africans, it's two different versions of that. As I was saying, this is amazing. You can stream this if you don't know it. But um, yeah, those are my quick five punk records, post-punk records for Ron. Uh, enjoy your channel and thanks for offering the black flag record and subscribe to mine if you feel if you feel it um, I do this radio show you can see the links below and uh, Otherwise, thanks for doing it and hope you uh, enjoyed see ya